What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to IT Security Labs. And today we are working on detection and alerting. We're going to craft a malicious PowerShell that we will deliver to a machine that is Windows Defender already enabled. And if everything goes well, we should be able to bypass it and also check to see if we get detection. So if you're interested in crafting malicious payloads that will actually teach you how the bad actors act, this is going to be the series for you. I recently went for the OSEP exam and I learned a few ways to bypass Defender and also other AV. And I'm going to share with you so that we can both become very good defenders at the end of the day. So that's for educational purposes only. And this is what our lab setup looks like. We have the internet and then we have uh, OpenSense as our firewall. We have a victim, which is Windows machine, Kali Purple running our SIM and uh, our attacker machine. If you want to learn how to set up this, I have a series on this channel that will show you how to set it up as well. But right now we need to deliver a payload to this machine and get a reverse shell on our attacker. The scenario is we have someone who is opening these malicious links from emails and stuff like that and they are clicking. And today we chose to deliver using an HTA file, which is just an HTML uh, embedded with some JavaScript calling here. And as you can see, we are just calling for PowerShell. I'm saying, hey, PowerShell, let's do an execution policy uh, for bypass. I can actually tell this to be quiet, but I, I want you to be able to see that we actually launched PowerShell. So I won't tell this to be quiet, but we're using invoke web request to download a PowerShell script from the remote machine called uh, 192.168.38.170. That's the attacker Kali. And we're outputting that in C Windows Tasks. We can go to um, the temp, but let's use task for now. I'm naming that as a.ps1, and I'm immediately executing it as a.ps1. And this is happening mostly because I'm saying execution bypass here, and that's able to execute that. So now the next order of business is we need an HTA file like this that's hosted on Kali. We need sh.ps1 and with those two we can deliver this to the victim so let's go ahead and generate sh.ps1 so i'm using refshells.com just give it the attacker kali ip address and a port that i want to listen on i said 9090 and i'm saying hey i want it to be a reverse shell i'm using powershell just the canned out of the box so that's what surprised me and if you know why this is not getting uh, detected by my defender please let me know in the comments because i was expecting the defender to be complaining but so far there is no complaints and i have everything enabled as you'll see but my a.ps1 is going to call back on this ip address on this port um, using just regular powershell so i copied that went to my attacker and then uh, nano sh.ps1 that's the exact line that is pasted in here in the port nothing was changed i didn't even uh, encode or anything like that so it's named sh.ps1 and then we come back and we tell our runner here our loader that hey uh, we would like you to download using execution policy and put it in that location and immediately run it so everything is now in place we just need to have our loader dot HTA. I like to name them very short. So in this case, this loader is named b.hta. I just named it b.hta, but it's the same thing. And it's going to download that and output it. So with our HTA file ready, we just need to deliver this to the victim. If you have an email address, this is where you can send an email using Squacks or whatever you send your emails with. And hopefully they click. In this case, we're going to simulate just a person visiting our site. But if this was in an email, that's what you do. So first we'll host it on our simple HTTP server. Then we'll start Netcat on 9090. So this is going to be a simple shell, simple straight power shell. It's a clean one. And then we go to the victim here and the victim visits their website, our, our website. We just very simple here. And yes, b.hta. 
So if we download b.hta and we open it, assuming, oh, Defender is complaining already. Something is happening here. Uh, Defender doesn't like something. All right, first let's check out Defender. I don't know what he doesn't like. So what's going on with you, Defender? Maybe it's actually finally catching my... Oh, look at that. <laughs> no, don't send that. Don't send my samples. So here's what we have. Real-time protection is on. Cloud-delivered protection is on. Sample submission. So for now, I don't want that one to be on because I don't want them blocking my real payloads. But for now, I'm saying no simple submission. Just uh, everything is on. Maybe we'll, we'll enable it in a little bit. So let's download that again, b.hta. Okay, now let's open it. So when we open it, we're expecting, you know, H over here, First of all, we're expecting b.hta to download with a 200. Okay. Then we, if we run it, PowerShell is going to launch. That's good. And then on the victim here, it's, it reached out and it's asking for our PowerShell SH. So that means that it's going to actually work. Come back here. We get a connection. If we do an LS, we see that we are there. Uh, who am I? Okay, so we are there. And this was just a simple way of delivering our PowerShell using an HTA file that the victim will click on. So, so far, everything seems to be working other than the little complaining that Defender did when it wanted to scan our sample by submitting it to Microsoft. So, you tell me, is this necessary <laughs> to enable sample submission to Microsoft for defense or are we good? Oh, by the way, we also have defense with our Elastic Sim. In fact, I told this thing to actually defend. So if I refresh this, you will notice that this will also have alerts. So we are, it's not like we are not getting detection working here. For starters, we have this ridiculous alert that's execution from unusual directory. Really? We just executed a reverse shell, and the one thing that you will be complaining about is this was coming from an unusual directory. I thought this was a joke. So let's check it out. Get me out of the way. Really, this is what it saw. The fact that we put our payload in the Windows tasks and we execute a PowerShell from it. That's what it's complaining about. If you look at this rule, if we check it out, this is one of those ridiculous rules, and I'm thinking, really, really? There is a list of directories here <laughs> that they are looking for, including tasks. That's how we got caught. I think this is going to be a very noisy rule in production. So... I'm not too excited and I don't think it counts as them detecting my reverse shell. I, I want something ridiculous, something that says, hey, I saw PowerShell calling to, to a remote service. Here we have, who am I? That's what it's complaining about. Who am I and unusual directory that it was in C sharp. So that is not going to be cutting it here. We're going to up things a little bit with Defender since we want to mess with this. We're going to say, okay, fine, submit it. Okay, let's close PowerShell. So you most likely want that to be hiding so that things don't um, work. So we enabled submission and here is um, a new shell that we're going to try to get our listener and our um, download here. So now let's download b.hta one more time. All right. Our victim is like, yeah, sure. I'll click on that. Here's PowerShell. Hey, what happened? I'm, I'm, I said submit it. 
So, okay. Yes, SH, we reached out both times and we got our show again. If you run who am I, of course, there's a silly rule that will catch us. But here we already we already have some command execution. So the real question is why is a silly simple why is this simple PowerShell not getting Defender to go really crazy? You let me know because <laughs> in my lab environment here, I was expecting it to get caught. In fact, this is what I had planned to do. I wanted to show you when I in, when I first started this, how you can use ISE steroids. So you would paste this in PowerShell ISE. This is my development machine, and you load. Um, import module, ISE steroids. That module will allow you to actually randomize and obfuscate some of this here, and you actually be able to. Uh, bypasses. So just in case it doesn't work for you, this is what you do. You go and get yourself ISE steroids. Just Google ISE steroids. You'll be able to load that in your development machine. Then once you have this payload from um, that website, you can just come here to tools and say, hey, let's obfuscate all this code. I, I usually like to just leave everything the same. Then if you say, okay, it will actually obfuscate it base 64 encoded and this payload here will bypass defender for sure but for whatever reason um in my lab right now the clean one is still running and i'm getting a reverse shell so let's finally look at our defenses and maybe it takes some of those things a few minutes so some of these rules take a few minutes to run so let's refresh again unusual activity from my directory that's going to be noisy defenders are going to disable that very quickly the who am i process i guess but this will also be noisy so we did not get anything actually interesting with an hta file and also a powershell uh, reverse shell so i also have powershell logging enabled by the way in my lab environment in that on that machine so PowerShell logging is actually enabled here. Do I have a PowerShell file? Let me show you. So here is a second one. Check this one. Here it is. So this is the lat latest transcript. So if this was a domain controller, at least the admin will be able to tell like what kind of games we are playing. This is what I'm expecting. I'm expecting it to be like, yo, what's going on here? a.ps1 was executed so let's check one more thing here if we go to our discover let's search for a.ps1 we should see it that it was executed there we go here are instances where that file shows up so whatever is happening here we need better rules we need better detection you tell me in the comments but i just want to show you a quick way of getting a reverse shell using powershell i'll be making more in here in this bit series otherwise if you like this please let me know in the comments like this video and also share otherwise i hope to see you next time